Hello, my most amazing artists, and welcome back to art class. For our next project, we are going to be creating some of these colorful castles that are inspired by an artist named Mary Blair. And to tell you a little bit more about Mary Blair, I am going to share a story with you called Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. I am going to read the page and then I will hold it up to show you the pictures. Under a wide blue sky on a red dirt road, in a lemon yellow house, there lived a little girl named Mary. Other children collected marbles or dolls, but Mary collected colors of every shade and every hue. One day, Mary's parents announced they were moving out west. As she waved goodbye to the yellow house, Mary tucked her friend Lemon in her pocket. Mary would miss the happy home, but she had new colors to collect. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taup, and sienna. When she arrived in California, she glimpsed the azure ocean and found groves of golden fruit dripping from viridian trees. So these are not usual color names that we're used to. We're used to red or green or yellow. So these are different colors that can describe different types of those basic colors. So for example, all of these, russet, taup, and sienna are different types of browns, like reddish browns or darker browns, and azure would describe blue, like the ocean, and viridian would describe green, like the trees. So you're gonna be hearing some different colors in this book. In the city, she discovered steel gray buildings and mauve tinted skies. Mary opened her sketchbook. She mixed her paints. She would save these shades for just the right time. When she was older, Mary went to art school. She met Lee. He showed her rosy pink and blushing red. She kept those colors in her heart. Together, Mary and Lee painted rainbows, but it was the Great Depression and people were poor. No one was buying rainbows, except one place. Mary landed a job at Walt Disney Studios, one of the first women ever to be hired. Finally, a place for her colors to run and dance and play as they pleased. But on her first day of work, the men in charge didn't want to talk about Cerulean or Celadon or Cerise. They were only interested in black and white. Mary was told to follow the rules. She tried, but her colors were too vivid, too wild. When Mary turned in all her work, all her ideas were rejected. Twinkling emerald skies, the men turned them blue. Magenta horses that could fly, the men made them brown and put them in a stable. Peach giraffes with tangerine spots, her bosses just shook their heads. They didn't know what to make of her art. But Walt, the man who owned the company, did. He loved her colors so much, he asked Mary to join him on a trip to South America to meet some new ones. Mary delighted in the colors of Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. She worked hard to capture the vibrant scenery. When it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. After Mary returned to Disney, her concept art for the studio's upcoming films grew even more adventurous as she drew upon the eye-popping shades she'd observed in South America. 
Cinderella needed a teal pumpkin coach. The caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland could only be aquamarine, and the mermaids in Peter Pan simply had to be lime green. This time, some of Mary's ideas were accepted, but most of her art was still considered too modern, too abstract, and just not right. Mary's colors encouraged her to leave the men with their black lines and strict rules. So she did. Mary quickly found new work designing advertisements, illustrating picture books for children, and creating sets for plays and television commercials. She enjoyed the freedom of these new jobs, but Mary missed Walt. Then, one day out of the blue, Mary, her phone rang. It was Walt. Mary, I have a project for you. I need your wild and beautiful colors, his voice boomed. Walt explained his idea to build a magical ride that would teach people about cultures from around the world. The ride had to be full of color, which meant there was only one person for the job. Mary, you know about colors I've never even heard of before. Mary smiled, and then she frowned as she remembered the rules and the lines and the men in charge who didn't understand her colors or her style of art. There was only one way to answer. <clears throat> yes, said Mary, but her yes came with a condition. This time, Mary wanted to be the one in charge. Walt welcomed her aboard. Mary's paint seemed to sparkle when she hung up the phone. She had never been to places like China or Morocco or Kathmandu, but her colors had. Sitting down to work, she squeezed out dabs of paint. Lemon yellow, aquamarine and azure, mauve, top, and tangerine, russet, sienna, and steel gray, celadon, cerulean, cerise, magenta, teal, indigo, and emerald shined from her palette. And when she picked up her brush, the colors Mary had so carefully collected all her life took her on a trip around the globe. When her work was done and the ride opened, people gasped in awe. It's a small world was a sensation. When it was Mary's turn to take the ride, she leaned back in the boat and let her colors wash over her. It was a world of laughter, a world of smiles, and color, color everywhere. This at last was Mary's world. So that's a little bit about Mary Blair. She is the artist that helped to design the ride, It's a Small World, which even if you've never been to Disneyland, where the original one is, or Disney World, you can always look it up on YouTube and kind of take a look at the ride. But it's, it's just a simple boat ride where you can kind of learn about different cultures around the world and all of these little dolls. But all of the designs and all of the colors that are used in this ride were designed by the one and only Mary Blair. So what we're gonna learn to do for our projects is I'm gonna take you through step by step how you can create your own castle in the style of Mary Blair and how you can make it your own. To help make your Mary Blair castles, you're going to need a piece of paper to draw on, a pencil, if you have a black Sharpie, that would probably be helpful to help outline everything, otherwise a regular black marker will do just fine. Um, you're going to need a ruler probably to help you make the boxes to build your castle. And then you are also going to probably want to reference to the Mary Blair Castle packet, which I have attached to your assignment in Teams. And also, I have also shared these photos with you within Teams so that you can take a look at these. So there's a couple different pages, but we'll get to these in a second. These papers are a lot bigger than what you probably have at home. These are what we would have done them on in school. So any kind of paper will do. And you have to decide if you want to hold your paper horizontally, so it's side to side, or if you want to hold your paper vertically so it's tall and up and down. Your castle can be either way and that's your choice. Once you've decided which way you want to hold your paper, the first thing that you want to do is start planning out and building your castle. You can see that most of my castle is made up of different squares and like little rectangles and built up, but there are a few things that you do want to make sure you are including in your castle. So here's one that I was beginning here, nice vertical one. And a couple things that you want to make sure that you are including while you're building your castle 
is a door. So you're going to want to make a large space for a door somewhere. It can be in the middle. It can be off to either side. You also want to have a circle somewhere on your castle for a clock face. And you want to have a circle somewhere off of your castle for a sun. And we're going to add some details to these afterward. Then the rest of your castle, you're going to want to use a ruler and you can build it using different blocks. Make some of your blocks a little bit taller, have some of them a little lower. I like to always have my castles have one really, really tall tower. And then after you've built up your castle, you can refer to the sheets to help you decorate them. So this is a roll and draw game. So if you have a pair of dice, you might want to shake the die and throw it to help you figure out which designs, or you can simply take a look at them. You can also pause the video here if you'd like to look at the different sheets and you can pick and choose your designs. So for example, for you have some different windows that you can draw. So you can make some of these boxes windows. You also have different designs for your door. Have the door for this one down here. Then I also have the crisscross design for my door up here. This design, I went with the doors with the different design going on the outside of it. All right. And then you also have all of these designs inside of these boxes that were very similar to what Mary Blair used in her artwork that I have used to fill in my spaces all over my castle. So you can do the dice roll game or you can kind of pick and choose what you would like to draw. So for example, I might decide on my project here that maybe I really like the zigzag design right here and I think I'm going to do that in this box here. So I can simply draw that design in there. And then I might also like, you know, just this one with the four dots. I could choose to put that one here. All right, so you're just drawing in and adding designs. After you've drawn in and added all your designs, all right, the next page is for the castle domes. And these all go on top of your tallest points. And you can see up here, I've already started to draw one in. I decided to try and draw one of these pointy domes like you would see over here. Some of them I might do a little castle spire like this and do like a little flag on top. So maybe this little guy here, I might decide to do a little thing like that and a little flag on top. So you're going to add some things to the top of your towers. The next page in our design is for the clock face. Now it gives you the directions here at the top on how to draw the clock face. And then these are the details. So these are the eyes, the nose, the cheeks, and designs that you can put inside the triangles. But the directions here at the top show you how to draw the clock face. So on my clock face, according to my directions, I would draw the triangle. Then I would include the beginning of the nose. Then I would create the eyes. Then I would add another rim to the eyes. smile and this little circle down here and then I could use the rest of this to fill in specific designs on my eyes, the bottom of my nose, the cheeks, which would go here and here. And if you want to, you don't have to draw it straight. You could draw this whole thing tilted kind of like a clock face that's tilting back and forth. So that's for the clock face. And then the final part before you would start coloring would be how you want to design your sun. And your sun is the circle that is outside of your castle. And you can design it any way you want. You can pick a way to draw the nose, a way to draw the eyes, 
a way to draw the mouth and the cheeks, and what kind of sun rays do you want on the outside of your sun? And you can see my sun that I drew here and another sun that was drawn here. So you're gonna use the paper, and again, I'm going to attach these to the assignment, or if you want to rewind and pause the video where I have held these sheets up, you may do that as well. So I'm gonna hold them up one more time. You've got the different things you can choose for the sun, your different designs for your castle windows, doors, and other things. Your castle domes. And how to design your clock face. And after you are all done doing that, it is completely up to you. You could use watercolor paint if your paper is thick enough. I used markers, you could use crayons and colored pencils, and you are going to color in your designs. I'm gonna unhook this one that I have right here because you guys can see the one that I have up here. And you're just gonna make them super colorful, all right? And you're gonna make sure that you fill in all of the boxes if you wanna use certain colors, make it kind of like a pattern, you can do that as well. So. And that's it. And that's how you create your own Mary Blair castle. Remember, you can always pause and rewind the video to see different parts if it went a little bit too fast for you. And make sure that you take a picture of your artwork and send it to me so I can see it. And you're going to have two weeks to work on this project. And I can't wait to see your Mary Blair castles. And I'll see you guys again next time for art class. Bye.